Hey guys and girls, I'm James and welcome to my channel. So you went to go open up your Ophelio Go app today and you fly your Holy Stone drone and then you noticed that there's an update. And when you went to go to the update, you noticed that it said, the setting of aircraft fence shall be subject to the app. What does that mean? Well, it means now that Holy Stone's going along with other drone manufacturers and allowing the FAA to geofence their drones. And we'll get into that. So on this video, I'm gonna cover what is geofencing? Is it a good thing? How do I find out if I'm in a geofenced area? And can I, and thirdly, can I get clearance from the FAA to fly my drone in a geofenced area? So first, and another thing I'm gonna go over is I'll give you the timeline for remote beacon and what that means. So first of all, what is geofencing? So if you go to the FAA website, they have a BR sectional chart in the, and they also have it in the drone zone. And if you open it up, you're gonna see all these numbers and colors and everything else and it seems very confusing. Well, what that is explaining is what is what airspace you're in. You could be in D, C, G, but, and all that may seem too confusing, but if you open up your Before You Fly app and download that and it'll open it up. And if you look, here, I'm in this blue dot, so I'm in an unrestricted airspace. But if I go one mile to the left or one mile to the right, I'm in a restricted airspace. Some of these airspaces have limits on it. So all drones are not allowed to go above 400 feet. So some of those will only allow you to go up to 100 feet. So once this drone leaves one inch off the air, you're the pilot of a UAS, an unmanned aerial system. And there's a lot of responsibility to, that goes with that because you are in, because you're in FAA airspace. And you might say, is it, it so that's what geofencing is. Now all along, DJIs have always been geofenced. And when you open up the app, it'll tell you in, you're in a no fly zone. And you're not gonna be able to take off unless you go get a lance. And we'll go to that in a minute. So last Saturday, I was in a clubhouse event with our Lone Star chapter of AUVSI, which is for the advancement and safety of drones that we meet weekly on Clubhouse. And if you're more interested in that Clubhouse event, ping me and I'll send you an invitation. Anyway, one of the directors of Alltel was in there and Alltels have never been geofenced. And he said that they're gonna start geofencing and I was shocked. Because as a roofer, I used to always use my DGI to do my roofing inspections. But if I was geofenced in, I would pull out my Alltel to do my inspections. But now I have my 107 which is my certificate, commercial certificate from the FAA. And that's, if you don't have this and you're into drones, really looking to get in this part 107, um, go see Greg at Pilots Institute and learn more about it. Also the FAA in the drone zone has an 88 page handbook that you can go over how to review to take your test to get this part 107. So is geofencing a good thing? Absolutely. The more drones that are in the air, the more the FAA is going to have to start having more regulations. Here in the Metroplex in Frisco, their Walgreens is going to start doing drone deliveries for prescriptions. And as time advances, there's going to be more and more drones in the air. And you may say, James, we're overregulated. Well, when they first invented cars and they invented roads, there were no stop signs and no speed limits. Well, could you imagine a world today with no speed limits and no stop signs? And it has to be regulated. That's what they need to do with drones. Because uh, the public perception of drones is that they're an invasion of their privacy. But as a drone advocate, we all know that these things make the world a better place. Through first responders, agriculture, I could go on and on about how the advancement of drones is good for all of us. Also, five miles from my house this weekend, we had a TRF, which is a temporary flight restriction. So the FAA throws a geofence area around that air show, and they may do it around sporting events. Uh, if the president's down the street from you, they're gonna throw a geofence out there, and there's no way you're gonna be able to, to fly your drone. So to find out if there's TRFs, again, the Before Fly app will let you know. Uh, it may seem like a pain in the beginning to start going and checking to see if you're in a geofenced area, but the more you do it, the more it'll become commonplace to you and you'll understand that this makes the airspace safer for all of us. So how do you get clearance if you're in a geofenced area? Well, you may, again, if you're close to that sporting event, close to the president or close to an air show, you're not gonna get clearance. So if you're a hobbyist and you wanna just go out and have fun, you can do it through the LANT system, again, the DGI app will walk you through the steps of how to get, go to the FAA and get clearance to have your drone fly. But if it doesn't, and you have another drone that doesn't have that built into the app, you need to go to the Before You Fly app and go through the process of getting your lance uh, to take off in the air. And how to do that would be another video. It's really simple. It seems like it would be very confusing. But, um, and of course, all of this is in the United States with the FAA. So one year from now, in October 2022, all drone manufacturers are gonna to have to start putting a remote beacon on a drone because the FAA wants to know what drones are gonna be in the air. So anything that's over 249 grams will have to have a remote beacon in the drone. And in October, 2023, 
all drones that are in the air over 249 grams will have to have a remote beacon. And now with DJI, that's just gonna be a firmware update. With other drones like Holy Stones and maybe some other ones, uh, you're gonna be able to get a module that you'll be able to put on uh, that will give the FAA that remote beacon. And if you get caught flying without a remote beacon, that's federal, that's not state, and that's not local government. You're, you're flying against FAA regulations. So what's gonna happen to the little $100 budget drones that are over 249 grams, and that module's maybe $150, then they're gonna be worthless. So the drone industry is gonna change. There's gonna be better drones in the air. So recently, DJI already started putting ADSB technology in their drones, which lets them know that there's a plane in the area and to, and to give way for it and land if you're really close to it. So the reason I found out about this, I went to go do a review on this Holy Stone 510, and then I saw that update, and I, and I was kind of shocked. But I gotta tell you, I did go to the temporary flight zone, so I, know I, went, I went close to the air show, and I took this 510, and it would still fly. Now, I didn't fly it, that'd be illegal, but it, I did turn on the props, and it, did, and it would've taken off. So right now, I don't know if the Holy Stone app has a technology to restrict and geofence Holy Stone drones. I'm not saying that these are gonna be geofenced, but I do see it coming, and of course, I do see it coming with Autel, and it's always been that way with DJI. So I think it's gonna be important for all drone manufacturers to start following along with it. So if you got something out of this, please like and subscribe. I'll start trying to have more and more weekly videos about drone education, the way drones are headed, and start interviewing some of my members of my AUVSI, Lone Star Chapter, and other people that are in the drone industry to keep you up to date of what drones are doing and where they're headed. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.